Welcome everyone to this Force Friday. Uh, today, you have the chance to draw with us, right? So we've done this in the past. Uh, we sent out some pictures for you guys yesterday. Hopefully you've taken advantage of uh, getting them a little early and you know trying to draw the photographs yourself. Uh, and then this way, you know, you come in with a prior experience of, you know, attempting that and then seeing how we handle it, right? So today we'll, the three of us will go through our references and talk about what's going on, right? Like, what are we thinking about? Why are we drawing this in this order? Or what am I thinking about here? Um, and follow along, you know, so today is a great day for you to pull out your um, sketchbook or your newsprint pad or your iPad or your Cintiq, right? And try to move along with us as best as possible, right? Feel free to ask questions, obviously, in the chat as always. Uh, we love hearing your questions, you know, try to, I think that's the best way for you to get help. Um, if you like what we're doing here, of course, subscribe and, you know, share um, this information with your friends, your fellow art friends, and hit the notification button. Uh, if you, um, if you want to be notified, right, this way, you don't have to worry about missing any Force Fridays. So uh, today, Murtunji is going to start us off, we'll have almost a good 20 minutes each of us to, uh, to draw. Um, we'll see how far this ends up going, and otherwise, uh, the rest of us will, uh, you know, help you guys out in the uh, chat. Uh, let's say hello to our other force instructors before we get started. How you doing, Rotunjay? Hey, man, I'm big good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Excited. Doing well. well. Doing well. Yeah. Tired today. <laughs> <laughs> I went to bed too late, so uh, I'm gonna do my best to draw with force and some passion and excitement. <laughs> How are you doing, Swanley? Ah, uh, good. No, ready to go all out. But first, I'm going to just sit back and watch you guys. Yeah, so you hold up the rear, you get to watch us go through it first, right? Yeah. Kind of good sometimes being last, you know, right? In the middle, I don't know, I'm in the middle today. First is great because you get it done. Last is good because you get to watch what happened. You can strategize around it. And then there's the middle child, you know, <laughs> tough place to be. The sandwich, the meat of the sandwich. Say what? I'm on the steak today. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, let me uh, give you some control here to uh, uh, to take over, make you a co-host, and Swenley a co-host while we're at it, and then we'll get going here. Co-host. All right, Murtunjay, it's all yours whenever you're ready. Sure. Okay. All right. So here's my 20 minutes. <laughs> <All right>, so... <laughs> 20 minutes of fame. There it is. <laughs> so let's go. Um, all right. So I have uh, two photographs here. Now, today, uh, you know, today, uh, so here's two photographs, you know, these amazing photographs here. Uh, so today I decided uh, to go with a little bit of like detail. Okay, um, so it's, it sounds like a free session. I mean, uh, <laughs> like like a more like freedom. You know, where you just gotta do like where it takes you. But I have something in mind. I just want to do a, like a little bit of detail. So maybe I'll like sculpt it a little bit more. Okay, and uh, like spend some more time with it. So let's go. Let's say for like 10, 10 minutes, twelve minutes, you know, per per image or something like that. Okay. Great, uh, and as, as I'm gonna go through, I'm just gonna explain, you know, like the process. Um, I might not talk as much, you know, but <laughs> I'll try to do it. So, yeah, I mean, today, you know, I'm just like combining, we, we are just like, we all three are kind of combining like, all the knowledge, you know, that we're presenting here. Basically, force, form, and shape together. Okay. Um, so you can see me starting here with a little bit of, yeah, I mean, uh, we too de uh, we do uh, we do teach gesture first, you know, which is like the basics. Uh, but as a, as a time as you like move into the shape and such, you start to like really see it through the like the mind of shape, right? Uh, I mean, you have this like uh, filter you know, that that you're watching through. So, well, basically, what I'm doing is I'm just like watching this like big shape, you know, as you can see over here. So I'm judging the template, right? This is like a this is an S template, as you can see, okay. It's moving from here to here. And this is the rhythm that I'm watching. 
Uh, okay, so I got that first direction force there. So this is the one. I'm gonna I'm gonna put another direction force in there. Right? So this is gonna take care of like this whole rhythm in the torso like that. Uh, see, like the point of focal focus here is this uh, this back section right there. Okay, so I'll try to like really uh, kick in and I'll try to like make a focal point in there as well. Okay, so here's this like hand coming out coming out towards us. Okay, you can see the form in there. This hand is going back. Okay, it's so a cylinder. As you can see, like now I'm just using very simple forms, you know, to to depict the to depict the space there. All right, this hand is coming out. I'm just gonna do a very quick gesture for the hand. Uh, for this one too, I'm just gonna put in a, yeah, put in a little bit of that line to represent it. Uh, all right, let's take care of the rest. So I'm just like putting some quick form because this uh, this rear end is coming out towards us a little bit. Okay. Uh, here you can see how amazing that that small uh, squash, kind of a squash, I would say. All right, something like this. Uh, all right, I might just take the torso, you know, instead of you know, just like taking the whole rest of the figure, because you know, yeah, just like I said, I, I want to spend a little bit of time kind of detailing it a little bit. Okay, let's we'll see how uh, where it takes us. And uh, and that is a very interesting part, by the way. You know that I uh, like you know was like pushing back, and, and there's like some uh, not some. There's actually a lot of pressure onto that like scapular part there, and I, I would like to capture that in my going here. So, so but <laughs> but drawing in there, and I'll just just make some line to like continue that down. Okay. All right. So we have our have our like most like the, of the base ready. I'm aware of it, that this is going this way. And there's like a, there's a pressure over here, you know, this area right there. Uh, we can see a little bit of chest from there as well. So I'm just gonna capture that. Again, as just like I said, we are going for a little bit more accuracy today. Um, any questions? No. <clears throat> All right, you can ask any questions as well, by the way, if you want. All right. Yeah, uh, it's all good so far. Yeah, thank you. Um, making my life easier. Oh. <laughs> exactly. All right. This hand gesture. Look at this hand gesture. Very cool. All right. There we go. Have our sort of base ready right by, by right by now. I'm just gonna okay do this arm as well. Uh, so here I'm just uh, just like I said, I'm combining like all the force form shape and anatomy like all together. Okay. Everything together. Now well, it's time to uh, do some sculpting. Yeah. So I would like to start, you know, when I'm sculpting, by the way, I'm not just like working on one single area. You know? So many people I've seen like in sculpting, what many people do is like, they really just focus on like one small area and they were like zooming in or just like, you know, kind of like doing this and this and this and this and this. And they're like putting a lot of lines and they're just like zooming out like, oh my God, and that's too much, okay? So again, to, um, to control that, right? To control that that thing, what you gotta do is you gotta work on the whole figure, even though you're just getting into detail. Okay. Yeah, it's the secret, you know, just uh just work on the whole picture together. What you would like really learn there. Um, all right. So here are like some muscles in there. I know I know like what those muscles are basically. So that's the traps, you know, that I'm drawing right now. It's like a little bit of scapular muscles right there. Yeah, so, so this is like the, this you can say like uh, the third, hmm, the first pass is like, you can so, say the rhythms, you know, when, when you're doing, doing the rhythms, right? Just like this and this. The second pass is like mostly putting in the form and such, right? Um, in shapes. But now it's like uh, almost like the third pass where you're just kind of like detailing the muscles or just putting an anatomy on the top. So uh, you can also call it like the icing on top, right? <laughs> you're just like trying to make that bigger, uh, let's say more detail, you know, trying to like make it look more accurate you know, with all the bumps and the details, but still try to like make it all work together. So yeah, something like that. All right, uh, all right. Now we have this deltoid right here. I'm just like this. I'm gonna put like uh, like some forms of the muscles right there. Something like this is here is a little elbow. You can see like uh, this one. This arm is like very, 
shapey right now. I'm just gonna kind of make it a little bit more organic. Okay? And here, now we start to sculpt a little bit. Okay? You see, I'm, I'm just like putting some lines, okay? Some lines around it and obviously around the main focal area, like this area right here. Sculpting is uh, sculpting is very meditative, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, you can just like do it for, I don't know. So sometimes I do it for hours. <laughs> it's very meditative. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like putting in some lines. There's this uh, satisfaction you get when you just like make your brush a little smaller and just like start to like work on those details a little bit, but still trying to like uh, make it feel forceful. I'm actually going with the direction of the force, by the way, if you're wondering, you know, how I'm sculpting, I'm just going in the direction of the force and the form together. So you can, uh, if I just want to make a, let's say a blue line, right, representing form, this is like this, this is like that, okay. Uh, talking about the arm, which is going like this, this arm is going like that. Uh, yeah, so these are like a few, see, the neck is going like this. These are like few form indications, by the way, and I'm just like uh, aware of it when I'm doing the sculpting. All right, let's uh, let's keep going. You know, we might spend like the whole time with this one, you know, but uh, just wanna like show you that's like really possible. You can spend like more time with it. Many people ask me this question a lot, like, mm -hmm. how do you take a force line to let's say, if you wanna spend spend more time with you do that? So you can sculpt it. You can you can put a light in shadows. You know. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's for another stream. Right? We'll, we'll do that as well. All right, I'm just gonna put in some more sculpting. Okay, so that's the elbow right there. Um, watching this asymmetry when you're putting anatomy, you know, that's one mistake that people always do. You know, they make things symmetric. You see, like, uh, apex of this this thing is right so there's like this kind of asymmetry that that's going on right now uh i don't like the structure of this elbow right here i'm just gonna redo it a little bit yeah you can also like raise and when you spend especially when you're spending more time but don't try to overdo it right just be really aware of like all the marks that you're making mm, all right like that and I'm, I'm really increasing the line weight over here just because again that's that's like the, the focal uh focal point in this whole line great right, right there i'm gonna sculpt it uh with a little bit of light handed right there okay just to give it more context and there we go so i sculpted my main part uh so not to overdo it i'm just going to jump to different parts right now and then try to sculpt right there a little bit this hand right here is very cool again and this gesture right here look at the thumb right there how volumetric it looks like right there okay, here's a little little chair or whatever oh, that uh they call this like what here we call them donkeys in India. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, these like uh, artistic chairs. And... All right. That's traps, you know, I'm sculpting some traps in there. Try to show a little bit of like these intricate forms as well. So how these like, uh, these muscles are going that way. These are like really long muscles that actually connect from your like sacrum, like all the way to your back to the neck. So this actually gives us uh, gives us a little bit more form. And see how at this like my brush is like super super small, which is okay. You know, you're you're kind of like sculpting it. It's not not like cross hatching by the way. You know, some people would uh, ask me like, hmm, is this right cross hatching? Like cross hatching, you do this, you do this, and you do this. But here you're just like moving in one single direction. All right, I see like there's a tattoo over his arm, like this. The great detail, you know, and it gives us the, the form of the hand. Okay. Um, just gonna sculpt some arm. Um, 
back arm in there. I'm gonna scope this arm because obviously this is like much closer to us. It's gonna be like this. All right, now let's go for the delta weight a little bit. So you, you see, see how we started with a very simple structure. Hmm, one mistake I did, I, I must like copy the, the first drawing and keep it safe, you know, for us to watch afterwards. But anyway, you know, you can just like go over the recording again and yeah, you can see like how simple we started, you know, but uh, we just like spending more time. And this is like what, um, 15 minutes in, you know, around 30 minutes, 15 minutes in. And yeah, you know, we can make it like fairly rendered out. Um, Okay, so now we are coming back to not not bad, but you know coming down to rear end. So I'm just a little bit, just like I said, you know, I'm aware of the form and the form of the the rear end is like this. The upper end is uh yeah the upper course is like that. So see how the lines that I'm doing now, I'm just like doing them in this direction. But if I if I keep the lines in this direction, you know, yeah, you know the the form would be reversed. Okay, so it's there's going to be like a big contradiction there. All right, scoping a little bit of this. I usually start with a big brush, you know, even, you know, with the sculpting process, you know, the, the biggest brush that I can, and then I just like go for uh, smaller and smaller brushes. So again, I'm, I'm following the hierarchy in here. So just wanna show this. Gonna sculpt it a little bit as well. We have a sculpting brush as well, by the way, in the in the pack. Um, if you're not aware, if like you have a sculpting brush as well. Um, yeah, this one right here. I use this one for sculpting as well. It's a very good one. The first one is uh first one is kind of like just the versatile, just like the most versatile brush. In. Want to use a use from from the pack if you have it, you know, and then go for it as well. Right. Well, the why the reason why I'm not sculpting that arm like too much is because it's far away, right? So I'm just uh, and and you can see the density of my sculpting is mostly right here, right in this area again, because uh yeah I want to show some form in there. Right. This. We have uh, two minutes left, so yeah, it doesn't make any sense to like start with the new image. I'm just gonna keep working on this one. Uh, but let me make it a little bit more organic. And from here, the the other part, the the leg is coming. Scope with some big pixels right here. Um. And at this point, you know, when you're just like, okay, you know, I, I'm usually, I, I'm just like mostly done with it. Just want to see like those places where I can like uh, make it a little bit like more clear. For example, what I can do here, I can, I can bring this bone down here. Maybe I can make sure this muscle right here, like kind of wrapping around because obviously that's a pronation of what's happening. Or maybe what you can do is like show some of the hand details here as well. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of raise it. And then draw the hand here. And some some like more structure than before. So the the beginning strokes were like really bold, right there. And again, like obviously give it some form, and uh, yeah, and so on and so on. There's like the bone in there. All right, one more minute. Hmm. Uh, let's try to show a little bit of face in there as well. Right there, some details in the in the neck. Hmm. Try not to show like these like bold lines if you just wanna like make it more organic. By the way, so what I usually do is like if they're like too bold or something, and I just like erase that a little bit, and then. And then show that with a little bit of sculpting or something, right? So it just like makes it very organic looking. So this. 
Uh, okay, it's almost done. What I'm gonna do, like for just for the sake of clarity, I'm just gonna take a light gray, just uh, you know, do a tone down gray. And I'm just gonna like tone this one. Okay. A little bit silver, just for the like the sake of silhouette. You know, if you want to like judge it with the with that thing, you can see the shapes as well. Uh, here I'm doing it very roughly, but you can obviously take more time with it. Let's go with this. Really, uh, just like brings it out, you know, by the way. And this is just like half, right? So in 20 minutes, like we are, you know, we are just like able to do this, like half the body and then uh, some sculpting on top, right? You can see. So imagine that like, you can take like 40 minutes, you know, and uh, say sculpt the, sculpt the whole thing, right? Like draw the whole thing, sculpt the whole thing uh, within like 40 minutes, right? So here you're, yeah, I'm kind of like proving this point of like spending more time with it. Right? But at the same time, you're just like making it very functional, very forceful, right? You know, you're spending a lot of time. With it. All right, there we go. Right. Okay, I'm gonna hand it over to Mike. Mike is in the middle of today. And I uh, hope you like it. I hope you like this part. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Beautiful drawing. Um, Redacted had a question. No, was it? No, it wasn't Redacted. Um, Evgeny was asking if you knew the name of the model. Like, where did you find that reference? I would agree. That guy's a great model, by the way. Yeah. Um, I'm going to share uh, just, just to like show you the name here so you can like copy the link. I also have. Yeah, that'd be great. I also have his credits here. You can see it's Ryberg. His, his name is Ryberg on Gumroad. Mm -hmm. Right. Ryberg. Yeah. Homer, I guess that's what his name is. Yeah, he's awesome. It's yeah. hard to find really great reference. And like, if he was local, I would hire this guy. He's, he's fantastic. You know, yeah. Yeah, awesome. yeah, very, very good model. He's also very um, clear, you know, he's got like no body fat uh, and he's muscular. So you could really see everything and you could see force more clearly and he takes great poses, you know? So uh, to uh, Jenny's uh, credit, uh, yeah, good call out. Cause he's very good. I would, I would highly recommend him. On a side note, we also, all the models you typically see us using, most of them are also on drawingforce.com and the courses page. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll find where we sell the brushes. Uh, we have a couple of questions about brushes today. So our brushes are on the course page at the bottom and so are uh, photographs. Uh, there's a model pack there that's got around a little over 550 um, photos. So this way, at least you know you're getting models that are dynamic and forceful. All right, let's head over to Photoshop. Um, I kept thinking uh, today, and even while all the way up to Mertunje working, you know, like, is there some kind of particular subject I want to talk about? And uh, I and mentorship have been discussing quite a bit, like, uh, you know, is it better? Is it better to, um, here, let me write this down. Uh, there's just so many things I want to throw at you guys. So it's tricky. But uh, so one of them is, you know, I talk a lot about like the soft touch approach and there's sort of two versions of that. Version number one is, uh, version number one is you, you do the whole body, right? Whole body softly, right? And that really does make sense with the concept of hierarchy. Hierarchy hierarchy and version two is let's say per per zone and there's strengths and weaknesses to both of them i think maybe to some point i think i could see as a student maybe something frustrated at least if somebody's mentee of mine with i could feel a frustration for or i would even feel frustrated with is um there's certain rules that to me are really carved in stone that i just do not change and there's other ones I'm a little more flexible about because I know there's different ways of accomplishing the same goal. Um, and this is kind of one of them. I, I do think that whole body is probably better first. Uh, and then you start pushing your way into uh, per zone. 
what per zone gives you, and this will all make sense as I draw it, but what per zone gives you is you understand the uh, sort of the amount of force in a zone, amount of force, and how that amount um, pertains to the next zone, right? Like, what are you bringing over to the next zone of force, right? So that's what you get out of this. This is great, like I said, because of hierarchy. At least you're just seeing like the whole body at one time, right? And, and I think that's one of the biggest struggles that students have. So that's one thing I think I want to talk about today. And the other thing that came to mind while Mertunje was drawing is, uh, how do I put this? It, it's, it's kind of the same, I guess it's kind of the same conversation in a way, but it's, it's kind of thinking about like uh, drawing per line and then uh, connecting. I guess you could almost put it the other way around, say it's like the idea of connecting, right? So this kind of ties in a little bit more to the same order above connecting and then per line. So I'm gonna to try to walk through this right now. <laughs> okay, let's start here. I think I wanna start with this just to kind of, um, piggyback off of, um, off of Mertunje there a little bit. So let's take a look. Uh, da, 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 what is it again? F, let's get oil, let's get a layer set up and let's get a brush in here. So I'll use the gesture brush as well for now. And so the, the per line, what I mean is, you know, this is our force line, right? So first of all, you gotta just be able to do this. If you can't do this, then we're not going anywhere, right? Like you need to be able to do this. And that, that this is drawing a line that's got movement, you're coming and moving, you're pushing down, you're leaving moving, right? You gotta be able to do that, right? So get that done, <laughs> okay? Then when you look at the model and you take this line, it's like, can you find this line, right? Your, your job is to actually find that in here, right? And this line, remember the line equals force. So you're finding forces if you can find this darn line. And where is it, right? Can I find this line that has some kind of curve? So very simply and abstractly speaking, you know, and I look at the model, right? So here's the model. And I look at the model. I'm like, I think I see this, right? Does everyone see that, right? You can see this like curve over his shoulders, right? It's like that. I see his arm go like that. See that? And then this, this goes into the shoulder. And then I see his other arm is going like this. I see that off of the shoulder up here, I see his torso goes like this because it overlaps, you know, that arm, right? So it goes like this. I also see that it pushes in here and this is kind of straight in here to me. So it's like that. I'll remove, I'll move this off in a second, right? I see the leg, I see the leg is going like that and into the knee. And I think it continues down the shin. I see this leg go up into the knee and I see it go down, right? And there's his foot. And then I see that his neck feels like it's going back to me and his face is going back like this. And there's his head. Well, guess what? That is a pretty damn good start, right? Cause there we go, All right? There's a force drawing. You did it, <laughs> you see? So you're trying to find these, these curves of movement and the better you get at it, you'll start recognizing they, they connect to one another. Now, I didn't think about the connection of it here yet. Okay, that's where rhythm really kicks in. Ironically, they will connect because force does work that way. Um, so this is the per line segment, right? This is that second idea I was talking about and how do we get here? Well, look, there it is, right? Do you have the ability to do that, right? Can you do that? Now, it's a little more sophisticated than this. I'm purposely starting very, very simply here. But you'll notice that there's relationships. There's moments where we're jumping across the body, like I am here. So here, the shoulder drops down into that arm. That's a rhythm, right? Rhythm is when one thing connects, one force connects to another force, right? And you get this kind of S moment happening, right? So this, this hooks into here, right? That hooks in. And all the way from his hand and his finger out here, that hooks me up to his shoulder, and that takes me down that arm. Right, so suddenly I have something else that looks more like, uh, that looks like this now. You see? 
because I'm, I'm putting all those ideas together, right? Instead of me just hopping with these force curves from one place to another, they actually start to seamlessly connect, right? And this is like pushing up into that shoulder. And then from that shoulder, we go through that hang in the, in the torso, right? So it's like this, and that pushes in. This feels to me like a very stiff kind of straight. I'm not looking at all the little bumps of anatomy abstractly, like nothing's really very much going on there. It's pushing, it's kind of driving down into this. You know, and then the leg, right? Leg was going like this and going around the knee to the to the foot. And then this one is coming from here. It gets up to the thigh, you know, up to the thigh and down to the calf, right? And we have something that looks like that. So, you know, it relates, right? All these things connect here, even from the rear end. If I come from here, this sweeps up into the leg and comes down, right? So look, I've connected now from the foot. I've come down to the pelvis. I can get up to the shoulder, out the arm to the hand. Suddenly, the, I can get from the extended hand down to the foot. That's awesome. Now you're starting to feel rhythm, right? We're starting to connect. We're starting to actually flow from one place to another. So that's the fluidity part of it, right? So that's one way in, right? One way in to what we're talking about. Um, the other way, well, let's see, select all, delete, um, is more of this soft touch approach of trying to draw your way in through that connecting that I just did. And instead trying to find those moments that I pieced together, I'm gonna to try to flow by finding those moments really, right? So when I look at the model here, I really like that the model is kind of falling to the left in this rib cage right here where I'm circling on the photo, right? So I feel like I, I want that, like that might be one of my first ideas is like, I want this, right? And then I see that that pushes up into the shoulder, right? And then I can see that the curve goes down. And then as that curve goes down, I'm doing this, and I'm doing this very lightly and softly, I can go even bigger than this, right? You know, and I just want to feel my way around. So you see, I'm already starting from a place of connection, but what I'm connecting are those curved moments, right? So that's what I'm, I'm trying to do, right? But I draw it lightly, so I, you know, I have room to make mistakes. I'm not totally um, committed yet. You know, I can see, am, am I landing his knee in the right place? Am I getting the angle of that force correct, you know, to get down there? Can I land his foot in the right place relative to his crotch and his rear end, right? Like, is that working? You see, so you do this lightly. The lightness really lets you um, feel out the forces. You know, it's not only a great way of fixing and adjusting in a drawing versus iterating, right? You're actually fixing in the drawing, but it also gives you the chance to feel force. It happens to be soft touch happens to be a perfect tool for force drawing because because I can keep building up power. You know. I'm gonna make my brush a lot smaller. So that lets me make the, keep the line at a certain thickness, right? Cause when it's big, I'm drawing light. It gives me a thin line cause it's big and I'm drawing light, it gives me a thin line. And then I make the brush smaller cause I'm pressing harder, but I'm kind of keeping the consistency of that line thickness, right? So there's just no pun intended, but there's like this forcing function of like line weight size compared to pressure, right? So if I want a darker line, I have to go smaller to, do that. And I want to start pushing into that shoulder, right? Cause I, I see how that shoulder is pushing in like that. You see? So, and then, you know, I, and after I do this, this um, return Jay was doing in his, you know, you can start getting more of these, these details in here. It's like, well, I really want that rib cage right there to, to pull out. And I want to feel that, you know, that, that pulling down that's going on like this. Right. So the path is there, right? The path is, is helping me. So I can kind of keep driving the path. I'm kind of driving it over and over again, right? And as I'm driving it, I'm pushing into those harder and harder moments, you know, not harder, but um, places with more force. So this is that first hierarchical thing I was talking about. Remember I said, we're gonna do per zone for the whole thing. I kind of did the whole thing and now I'm driving through the zone. So I took like step one and then I'm doing step two. I'll do step two in a second um, as a starting point, you'll see the difference, right? So here, I, you know, I could do this and then like here I would come down and I would feel the shoulder and then I would feel the arm come out this way, right? And it gives me a chance to just stay abstract for a while and really just feel things out and see if things are working. And again, over time, you know, when you're ready, you start adding uh, all the nuance and the anatomy and the details of all this stuff, right? But I can take my time doing it. So this is what I'm trying to have beginners do. You know, people that are at the website, they're in mentorship, for instance, 
I'm trying to make them understand how to do this. And it's kind of challenging. I got to say, it's the human nature habit is definitely to come in dark fast, which is interesting because you don't know how to draw, right? And yet want to overcommit. You know, it's like never being in a relationship and you say, hey, let's get married this weekend, <laughs> right? Like, why would you do that? You don't know anything about relationships, right? And just kind of fall in, you know, face first into the pool there uh, and know nothing really about the person, right? So same with this, you know, like, look at this. Look at the squirrel I just found here. I love, I love how I got from here to here, right? I'm like, oh man, I can really feel this like sweep over. I'm kind of insinuating a future that Mutunjay was showing us because from me going like this, this curve in the rhythm is actually creating form, right? Because there's form in here to this leg, you see? So I'm kind of sweeping up and over. I didn't just go like this and say, there's a force here. Let me beeline my way over and get that. The straight line would flatten that out. I'm actually wrapping a little bit, right? And I don't mean musically wrapping. I mean like wrapping around, right? Yeah, you don't want to hear me wrapping. That wouldn't be very good. But anyway, like this, right? So when we pull out, right? Like, look, there's a forceful drawing, you know? I know a lot of people come to the site to learn because they're like, oh, I love the way your guys' drawings look. But it's really more about what we're feeling, what we're thinking about that ends up getting us, you know, to this place, right? So, you know, and of course, what I haven't added in here yet, uh, let's shrink this down a little bit, is I would want that like throwback, you know, of his neck and head. So I usually add that sternocleidomastoid muscle in there and I try to get that down to uh, the collarbone, which is about right there. And he's got this nice, really thick chin because of, um, because of his beard. Now. Last but not least, um, I wanted to talk about, that feels a little big. Uh, I wanted to talk about um, zone to zone, right? So this is here, I, I worked hierarchically, right? Okay, I worked hierarchically. This would be like way out here, right? Um, I took care of the big picture stuff, okay? And then I kind of like worked it up. If we go the other way, right? So the other way is per zone, okay? So per zone would be, the first thing I think I want to go after is like the rib cage and the shoulder. This whole area over here is really important because he's like pushing to the left. In fact, the leading edge is probably really the shoulder. So I would like start there, soft touch it. I would say, well, let me let me feel that shoulder out, right? And get this hanging happening. So I want all this like right here. This is like my first, so this is idea number one, right? See that? First idea. You know, don't start in the hand. <laughs> don't start on his face. Right, like here's idea number one. And I would build this up. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, I wanna feel the energy. I feel like I'm revving a car. I wanna rev up the line, rev up the line to feel the power that's going this way. I wanna feel that rev. So the line gets darker and darker and darker, right? Cause I'm like, mm. all right, I wanna build that up, build that up, feel this pull dropping down here, push into here. Right, feel this. I have to make my brush smaller, right? So I'm doing all this stuff to like get that energy built up in there. Now I have nothing else drawn though, right? So the problem is, man, I've committed. I've committed quite a bit. And commitment is black, right? I go to blackness, that means I've committed, right? It's very dark. So I just have to hope it's right, right? If it's wrong, I've just overcommitted, right? And that could affect everything else. If it's right, what I am getting out of this process is I understand the power here, right? So I don't have the rest of the figure down, but what I do understand is the power in this area, right? And this tone in here, this is all this applied force, right? That's like pushing into this shoulder and that's cool, right? And, and from a selfish point of view, I had, the, I had some fun already, like a lot of fun and just like shoving energy into that shoulder, okay? So that's cool but I don't know if it's right, right? So now I did that. What I got out of it was feel the power, right? I got the power of that place. So now I start coming down and I wanna feel, maybe I wanna get more into this rib cage power. I see already it's off, right? Cause I cut too far right too early, right? This rib cage should drop down straighter and then go like this. And oh man, I committed on that line already, right? So there's already a little of a faux pas, right? So here I push this out a little bit more and now I pull down and I get this and then I would start feeling power here. I'm like, man, I wanna really feel the weight of that, right? So this is like the roller coaster that we teach, right? It's like I'm pushing down here. And then, so I feel that, 
hopefully it's right, but I understand the power that's there that I'm going to then channel up to the knee, right? So then I'm in the knee and I push into the knee and keep getting the knee power correct, right? Before I go down. So I really have to hope that I'm getting things right from moment to moment to moment. I love the, the greed of this. <laughs> I love the the energy and sensation I'm getting from place to place. And I'm able to you know push that ball of power from one place to another in the body. And that's great. And normally this is how I, I work. But I think if you're just starting off, I think it's actually better to go softly across the whole body and try to see the whole system before you commit, you know? So this is what I was saying about the frustration of, there isn't really one way to learn. There's lots of ways to learn. And I'm sure there's even subtle variances between Swami Murtunje and I, when we're teaching you guys as men, you know, as mentors. Um, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you want to be aware of the fact that, I just want awareness. I want you to be aware of the fact that there's different ways, you know, noticing what those ways are, in the end, the end result's the same. The end is we want a figure that is functional, that makes sense, that is connected, fully connected, right? And that hopefully you had some kind of forceful experience. You know, you really understood what it's like to, to move around, you know, move around the body and feel those energies, right? I see a lot of writing going on. Uh, any questions here? Let's see where I left off. Wow, there's a lot of writing going on. Uh, first Friday, welcome, Marv. Uh, the soft brush tool doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Um, to redact this point, I'm trying to figure that out. I could swear a student had figured that out and I'm trying to find out who that was or figure it out myself. So yeah, soft touch right now is a no go in procreate. Uh, yeah, I can't get it to work either. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. Redacted. I'm late. I feel that when I do the whole body with soft touch, things get more connected. Yes, I would agree. Carlos, I've been sketching for the past six, seven months studying anatomy. Can you guide us? What else we need to start focusing on? That's towards Mertunje. Mertunje answered. Uh, greetings from Cameroon. Uh, okay, all good. Uh, Kevin, Mertunje, I think he said it best during One Force Friday. First draw the energy, then find the body within it. Yes, I would agree with that. All good, all good. A lot of welcomes. Anyone recommend a good force uh, full brush that's on Procreate base? Yeah, I don't. That's a great question, Marv. I don't know off the top of my head. Flame and smoke brushes, Mertunji is in there, Kevin. We've already purchased it and Pro Procreate Soft Touch is updated. Uh, if we fix it, yeah, you'll just get it. We'll, we'll put it in into that download so you'll, you'll get the fix, uh, Kevin. Uh, okay, it looks like you guys already handled everything here. So great. Uh, I feel like the per zone, Carlos said, I feel like the per zone can make the drawing feel more dramatic in some sense and with less fear when using more detailed line, when using the whole body, I start to think more when using darker lines. Okay. Carlos also said, there's a way of combining both whole and per approaches to most of both. Are they separate? No, in, in the end, honestly, so with the per zone, the reason per zone is working for me is because the whole is already in my head, right? When I look at the model, I already know what the whole path is, okay? So I think with time, you know, draw the hole and then you can go to per zone because you know the hole. It's like if I were to travel and I already know what the train line looks like, right? I know where all the stops are. I already have the map in my head, right? So that's the map. So then I can go and indulge in this like per zone activity, you know? But you saw today, even when I did per zone after, I mean, when I did the hole after that, I went per zone on top of that, you know? I think the goal would be to... Um, to keep learning how to draw the hole enough until you can draw per zone or even smaller, even more detailed if you wanted, but you've got the whole map in your head, you know. Um, is it safe to say good approach to soft touch um, a lot for the first iterations? Yes, getting over all the work and you iterate more, yes. Always again, broad and light first and then more detailed, right? Um, you know, redacted, redacted asked really quick about light and shadow before you could see the light source over here on this figure. And my quick answer to light and shadow is, you know, you got to know where light is. You got to know form because you got to know turning edges, you know, um, like right over here is the edge of the model, but there's a turning edge here. So, you know, I'd say always the first step to lighting is just tone in the sides where light is not right and push that idea. Once you have that, you know, and you set that up across a whole figure, you'd be amazed how powerful that is and how quick that is to get a surface. 
And then after that, it's really about understanding turning edges and how soft or hard, hard those corners are. But it's light, light source, understanding turning edges and form, shade the that far side and start there, you know, and then mix maybe with like some drop shadows, right? And that's that's a pretty damn powerful place. Maybe in the future, we'll do something more on that, but uh, I don't want to go too much further. Plus, I'm eating into Swanley's time. So, all right, hope that guy, that helps you guys. Um, I want you to just be aware, like I said, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. I want you to also see where I started today, right? We're even just getting those simple curves in and just trying to nail the stuff down and making sure the stuff connects, okay? All right, all yours, Swenley. Yes, thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Let's see, Let's see, I already have some power, so that feels good. Yes, you are supercharged. <laughs> What happened? You there, Swenley? I think Swenley looks very intense. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, yeah. Hours I'm going to, yeah, I'll take over until he kicks back in. Okay, so we're on. Oh, there he is. Can you hear us, Swenley? Uh, yes. There okay, you go. Nice. All right. Cut off for All a right. moment. Okay, you can take over again. Uh, let's see, new share. <laughs> Aroto said it's just too much power for Swenley. <laughs> <laughs> That's yep. funny. Overload Back to training. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was saying, you know, there are different ways that you can play with. Way to... Uh, darker ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the layer color in Clip Studio, which basically gives me like this nice light blue color to start with. And psychologically, that like takes the pressure off, you know, like darker lines feels like I need to be more committed. So just starting super light and loose. So just flow around and relax and have some fun with the drawing. So I like all the applied force on their back here. So I really want to capture that. And you have the lower part of her torso hanging down here. So now that I have the torso mass, I want to prioritize the limbs that support the weight. So in this case, both legs, let's go, let's go for this one first. So here I'm just thinking about how that thigh fits into its socket on the pelvis. I have this knee coming out here. So I'm staying super loose, just flowing around. And I'm drawing with force, form, and shape simultaneously. Uh, you have like the front plane of the knee, so I'm relating that to a cylinder. Let's see, this other leg is like coming out from behind here. And here we also see the front of the knee. And this is a front to front. Now for the feet, I just think of them as these forceful sock shapes to begin with, which we did talk about a while back in one of our live streams. So uh, I think it's called, it was called Fix Your Food Drawings or something like that. We also did one on hands. So if you missed that, definitely go and rewatch. I think it's, it will give you some nice tricks to uh, approach hands and feet. Let's see. I also like to visualize like a ground plane. Like imagine if there was a mat that the model was standing on, what would that mat look like on this particular, in this particular scene? 
Now, just to help you relate the figure to a ground plane, and the figure isn't just like floating on the page, uh, especially if you have to like draw illustration or comics where you have to draw the figure in uh, in perspective. Now, I, in my experience, this this really helps. Now, otherwise, you can feel odd so all of a sudden have to having to draw the figure to a, to a perspective grid. See, here's the elbow joints and there's the wrist joints. And here's the top plane of the torso. And force is coming from the back and driving into that deltoid. Then that is bringing us back to the arm. And the arm is coming out and of the hands. Again, I keep it things super simple and loose at this stage. Now this is just the first pass. I can use your clothing to help me see the form. I can treat the, the head and neck as like one, one fluid mass, which in fact they are, they work as a unit. Because the head, of course, it's a rigid structure, so whatever it does, the neck has to has to make that happen. So I usually treat them as like one one mass, and then I go back and I start separating them. Let's see, I think this. I need to just reposition this arm a little bit. Now, so at this stage, I can start looking for like the angles in between the limbs, and I can already see that this foot or this entire lower leg needs to be repositioned a little bit because that foot would have to land around here. Also, this would be more in this position. Now, so again, stay loose. Don't put pressure on yourself. Now, as if you notice mistakes, you just fix them as you go. So that is the first pass. Then we can do the second pass on top. Now, and the important thing is to keep drawing forcefully. Now, it's very easy to stiffen up as you continue, but I'm not cleaning up. I'm just doing a second pass. So I still want, I still want to draw fluidly, draw through. Now, bit by bit, I start arriving at, uh, at a cleanup as I'm solving like all, all the problems that I encounter in the drawing. See, so I have a lot of compression there. To well, help you see that knee, and I started with a cylinder, I can add, can add a turning edge in there. And see it as a box form and again how it fits into its sockets in the pelvis and you have this like hanging mass at the back of the hamstrings So now in this pass, I'm making the, the correction clear and still not getting into the details, just still wants like a simple, like forceful sock shape for uh, her foot. And I slowly start massaging uh, like more specific details in there.
Once they've had some wrapping, so the form remains crystal clear. I can even extend the stirring edge into the ankle and into the foot. And here I'm relating this knee again to a box. I really want to make sure that I understand the rotation. And then there's a lot of applied force on that chin, creating that strong curve. Oh, here I'm, I'm still drawing through. So we have the ankle. Let's see a little bit of that hamstring back there. And here I'm trying to be a bit more specific with the ankle. Oh, not the ankle, I mean the heel. And the foot, just making some minor corrections. And just going for that simple sock shape. And there's other clavicles in there. And the clavicles are like these two bicycle handles, which then connect to the shoulder blade at the back. How are things in the chat? Any questions? Looking good. Yeah, I'm return Jay's handling, fielding stuff. Okay. Yeah, Thank you, Return Jay, for making our lives easier. <laughs> you get what you do. <laughs> Let's see, is it just all coming out? Yeah, people were saying they like your mat idea on the ground, you know, to set up the perspective. Uh, yeah, yeah, I find that very useful. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to keep thinking in three dimensions. Also, still staying super loose, you know, no pressure, slowly but surely, as I keep working on the drawing, everything will uh, fall in place. I still want this a lot more applied force on their back. It's like really bulging out back here. And I like the, the stretch, the shoulder. It's almost like one four shape by itself. And that then connects us into the arm. Bone sticks out here, and we continue down that curve. So once we get past that elbow joint, the forearm, of course, gets wider, and then it tapers again. So this is already coming along pretty well. So if you continue working on this for, let's say, an hour or so, it would be pretty easy to get to a finished drawing. And I would continue drawing the same way, like loose and forceful. And with each pass that I do, I automatically will get more and more efficient with the line because uh, I'm doing all the work and figuring out all the stuff underneath, you know, with each pass. So you will automatically arrive at, at a cleanup. You know, you don't want to rush to a cleanup. Like often we see students 
want it to go to clean up too fast and the drawing isn't ready for the cleanup yet. So you want to just take your time you know, and work the drawing, solve all the problems, meaning making sure that everything works. Yeah, let's quickly get the head in here before we finish. Let's see, I'm thinking of the these neck muscles in the triangle. They form at the front. You see this big round chin and then of the face. So basically, and just just flowing around. And experiencing the like the energy and the vitality of the figure. As I'm drawing the forces slowly, all the details starts uh, appearing on the page. Okay, so that's a good setup. Also from here, you can definitely refine the drawing further. Like the pose is there. Now we have a good sense of perspective as well with the ground plane. So this would be good to go. All right, I'm going to leave it till here. Hopefully you guys enjoy today seeing our process and we look forward to see your drawings, you know, your version of drawing these models. Yeah, right, awesome. so your mind. Yeah, beautifully solid, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, guys, so that's it. Um, some great questions out there. Seems like we got some good feedback. Hope you enjoyed watching us uh, draw today. I think we do plan in the future doing a little bit more of this. Um, again, I really do feel that one of the best ways for you guys to learn is to actually just sit and watch us do it and have conversation with us while we're doing it. And uh, yeah, just learn by, you know, learn by seeing and hopefully you drew along with us uh, while you were at home as well. I think that's awesome, you know, to kind of go step by step through all of it with us. Let's see, before we go, um, thank you guys. Let's see, uh, Marv said, as I keep practicing, it's cool how I start to think the same as the artists on the channel. I look forward to getting to mic level after a million more hats. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. Thank you, actually, Marv, that is exactly right. What, what you're getting from us really more than anything is how we see the world and how we perceive it and think about it. And you know, our line language to therefore communicate those ideas, right? That's really what's going on here now on video 153, right? So um, go look for force, right? Be force detectives, go look for force, go find it and try to feel it and illustrate it. Um, have a great weekend and we will all see you next Friday. Take care. Bye-bye. See you guys. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye.